Hi guys, welcome to Motor Beam. This is the 2022 Hyundai Tucson, and just look at this car. What do you say, Pat? It looks amazing, out of the world. Something we haven't seen a Hyundai like this before, right? Absolutely. And do you know that this is the best-selling Hyundai car last year globally? Do you know it that? It has a long waiting period in Canada and all those markets. You Absolutely. Know and I had a word with the design team who had actually come down from Korea, and they told me that the design instruction was it should not look like any other SUV. And it actually, looks it fab. doesn't. And what really stands out here is just look at the front grille and how they've integrated these DRLs. It looks fantastic. Look at the curves, the cuts everywhere. It's just one looker of a car. Enough about the design. Let's get started with the driving feel of this car. Absolutely. Man, I can't wait to get behind the wheel. You'd already done the walk around on this oh, car yes, and I, I saw that done. video. Absolutely, you've covered everything, including the ADAS and everything. So I think let's just talk about <coughs> the engines, the driving, the ride and handling and let's go. Yeah, let's get going. I think you've already uh, covered everything about mm. the interiors, exteriors. Yeah. So I think let's just focus on the main part, how this car actually drives, how this car actually feels on the road. So this is the petrol variant, 2.0-litre four-cylinder engine. And uh, yeah, this makes 156 PS, 192, 192 Newton meters, six-speed automatic. How is it to drive? Well, actually, it's very linear. I mean, mm. honestly, the NVH levels are so good in both the petrol and diesel. Yeah. You can barely tell, especially diesel, you can barely make out. Uh -huh. Now, obviously, diesel is my favorite of the lot. Uh -huh. Again, it's a four-cylinder engine, produces 186 PS of power, 416 Newton meters of torque, which is quite a bit, and it made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Now, both the transmission, the petrol and diesel, mm -hmm. are torque converters. There is no DCT because I was talking to the product guys and they were telling me that DCT actually works best with the turbo engines. Okay, okay. So, since none of the engines are turbo, they haven't offered a DCT <laughs> yet. And uh, so, I asked them like any future plans. So, they said, you know, mm -hmm. in Hyundai, we say never say never. Kuch bhi ho sakta hai. Like, ah, as per market yeah. demand, they'll put anything. That you have seen in the last 20 years with Hyundai, <laughs> anything can happen. And I think they have, you know, turned around their whole product strategy. You know, and if nice you way. see, I mean, just look at this quality. Yeah. I mean, so good all around. The steering mm -hmm. feel. And the steering actually feels quite weird. And look at this ADAS. It is <laughs> ADAS giving me a collision the... warning because so this rickshaw guy decided to brake suddenly and uh, the ADAS kicked in and it uh, gave a collision warning. Actually applied brakes <laughs> to some extent. So it's quite a good feature and level 2 ADAS on this car yeah. which means you get this lane chain that says driver, uh, you know, awareness or what is called alert warning driver alert warning a lot of features are there actually. so i tried to pretend to sleep actually okay. and uh, it actually didn't kick in because <laughs> it knew that I was, it knew i was pretending you know <laughs> like i was actually aware okay so let's talk about the ride and handling now <clears throat> so the steering feels very well connected feels very well weighed high speed paid uh, you know good feedback yeah, yeah. and of course turn-ins are quite easy quite predictable and high speed manners are quite good road stability at like the road holding at high speed I mean it's quite impressive and of course it's a big car it's a heavy car so the weight distribution etc everything is sorted like honestly I can't find anything to really complain about of course the instrument cluster is the same one which you get on the Alcazar it actually came on the Tuso first yeah. but in India we got it on the Alcazar <laughs> but it's a tablet format looks very neatly integrated and overall even the quality of all the materials on the dashboard on the cabin and you know the fit and finish is so nice and I mean it is indeed worth the money that you're paying for this car right you're paying four million bucks it feels worth it lots of soft touch materials this whole panel looks so good and the infotainment is also very nice and of course what I really like you know the resolution of the infotainment system yeah of the uh, instrument cluster it's really good you know even the reverse camera because in the night no many cars when you reverse you, know, you can barely see anything in the dark but here they've got it absolutely spot on and this multi-air mode you know actually feels that cooling is very uniform yeah. like how it is in the airplanes actually uh, inspired from an airplane you know mm -hmm. this multi-air mode so now i'm going to do one thing i'm going to just take a u-turn stop the car yeah. give you a feel about it sure. and you tell me what you think about it done, done. Okay, so finally I am behind the wheel of that you saw and first of all, you have favorite feature on and kept it in ventilated seats. Already done. <laughs> this feature is a must have in every car. It is so hot outside and I cannot just, you know, emphasize on the importance of this feature. So, this car also gets heated seats, okay. which is a very few cars in India get. Hmm. I mean, besides the luxury ones. Because in cold countries, sorry, cold cities, like if you go up north, in Srinagar and all in winter, yeah, it's yeah. super cold. So this heated seat is pretty uh, impressive to have, but honestly, I don't think it's going to be used much. Now, when I was telling you about uh, the diesel, I also uh, didn't mention that diesel also comes with Hyundai's H Track, which is their all-wheel all -wheel drive system. system. Mm. Now, for the Tucson, it's only being offered on the top of the line diesel. Okay. It's not there in the petrol. Okay. 
I think the petrol Duso feels so nice to drive on, and overall also like compared to the older Duso, this one feels like it is two upgrades ahead of the older Duso. So, you know, so this is the this field. is the fourth generation <coughs> Duso. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> this is actually bigger in terms of longer, wider, mm. taller, and even a longer wheelbase compared yeah. to the outgoing model. So globally, you have the short wheelbase version also. In India, we have got the long wheelbase version because space is important at the back. Of course, people will be chauffeur-driven in this segment. And I coming like to chauffeur-driven. Sorry mm. to interrupt you. There is a boss mode here, mm. where you know, if you're sitting behind, yeah, you, you can, can just push yourself. Just the seat. Yeah, so you can be comfortable. I quite like the steering wheel. The quality of this is so nice, and it feels well weighted. And you know, it actually feels communicative for a change. The car is responsive when you're switching lanes fast, and if you're going so I was a bit fast on the twisties. Talking also. to the product guys mm -hmm. at Hyundai, and they were telling me that you know all these uh, you journalists when they give when you give us feedback yeah, on yeah. about the driving dynamics, mm -hmm. about the steering feel. These guys take it very seriously because there's a lot of work done on this. Yeah. And if you see in the last ten years, like right from the time of fluidic Verna mm. to what we have now, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not only talking to the, about the Tucson, like all the other products you talk about, Venue, Creta, Alcazar. Mm -hmm. The steering has. The feel and uh, you know the driving dynamics, uh, the high speed dynamics of the steering has improved leaps oh, and yes, bounds. Yes. These cars have come a long way for sure, and which is why the it is showing in the sales numbers, right? You see the Hyundai's cars in any segment, the i20 is selling so well. The Venue is a hot seller. The Creta is having a long waiting period, and it will be the same with the Tucson also. I think it's in mm. India. It's something to also do with how a car looks. You know, yeah. people are just sold on the looks. Mm. I mean, if you see the Creta, the second generation actually came out uh, just during COVID, yeah. and not many people actually got a chance to test drive the car. But the bookings were like crazy. It has a long waiting period of almost six months now, I think. And uh, even if we talk about the competitors of the Tucson, we have the Citroen C5 Cross and the Jeep Compass. Both the cars are nice; they are global products. But again, the thing is that. It is a bit dicey in terms of. Can I uh, interrupt you on that? Yes. Uh, so the Jeep was a very good car when they launched it, but it's become a bit dated now. <coughs> of course, they got a major facelift. Mm. But honestly, when you're spending that kind of money, yeah. the interior space is is honestly less than Creta, if you have to see. So I think that's a bit of a bummer on the Jeep Compass. But yes, I think Jeep should uh, innovate and get something new because uh, they're going to lag behind now. Mm. And also, the biggest thing here is that once you buy a car. You can buy any car, right? Yeah, yeah. But whenever once you buy a car, what really sticks is the after-sales service, the reliability of the car. And I think that on that front, I think Hyundai has really mastered it. So I think uh, the Tucson should see very good numbers. Yeah, because we are spending 35 lakhs on a car. You want to keep it for the long term, right? For 10 years, 8 years, and at that time, in that duration, you don't want headaches and any unnecessary tension, right? You want to like have a peaceful duration with the car, take it out and without, you know. Absolutely. The seats also feel very supportive. Mm. Uh, good back support. Uh, much better under thigh support than I've seen in other cars because I'm tall. Yeah, so yeah. I always find that lacking in most cars. And good a sense of lateral support as well. And of course, it's ventilated, so I'm not the complaining. The seats are also quite big in size, actually. They're not small, unlike some of the cars that we have seen. Right. So, yeah. Like, even the backrest is big, even the squab is big in size. So, you get a decent amount of comfort. Honestly, as long as it's ventilated, it works for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I think I'm going to get behind in the rear seat mm. and just experience how comfortable that is. Sure. So let's do that next. Yes. So I'm seated at the rear now and these seats get two step up recline and uh, it's quite comfortable. Under thigh support average but uh, the, the back support is pretty good. Headroom of course is uh, adequate for me and the panoramic sunroof you know throws in some good light so it feels very airy. So how is the leg space? Because I'm six feet tall, you are taller than me. So leg space is actually abundant. You know, there's mm. enough leg space on offer. And also, one thing I like here is the uh, transmission hump is not that big, so a third person can comfortably sit. And uh, from the safety perspective, I really like the fact that they've given a three-point seat belt for the third passenger as well. So that's a win, you know. One more thing I forgot to mention is that uh, the driver seat also gets a memory function. So I think that is uh, another useful feature if multiple people are using the car, right? The driver seat also gets 10 step electronic adjustment while the passenger seat gets an 8 step electronic adjustment. So I think overall as a package, the Tucson is complete. Lots of features, looks unlike any other car and drives rather well. The petrol engine is so smooth. I've been driving it since 20 kilometers now. Engine is very smooth. Drivability is so nice and the gearbox is also working in a very smooth fashion. So I think drivability levels are pretty good. I think this is one car which, uh, you know, will appeal to, you know, both kind of buyers, those who look for comfort and those who also want to push the car around a bit, you know. Yeah, yeah definitely. So on the safety front, you get uh, six airbags, you get uh, electronic stability program, vehicle stability management and of course you get the ADAS uh, which gives you a lot of warnings. 
So as safe as it can get. Yeah, yeah, safety has got you covered. So I think that's about it. We have covered a lot of things about the car. If you have any questions in particular about anything related to that you saw, let us know in the comment section below. So what do you think, Pat? <laughs> I am very impressed with this car. Lots of power and offer. Looks are out of this world, and lot of features. I think for 42 lakh on road Mumbai, it is a bit on the high side. But at the end of the day, it is worth it. No, being no, a no, CKD. no, no. So when you consider this being a CKD, and its closest competitor is the Jeep Compass. Now, don't forget that the Jeep Compass is more or less smaller than the Creta when you talk about the interior space. Yes, the car is very good, but it's five yeah, years yeah. old now. It is. And even now. though with the major facelift, it honestly doesn't stand anything in front of that you saw. So I think this is one car to watch out in this segment, and with the prices being so aggressive, I think there's absolutely nothing which can go wrong. This car is going to have a long waiting period. I think they're going to only sell 5,000 cars a year. So I think you should hurry up with your booking path <laughs> if you want this. Definitely, I'd say the diesel would be the engine of the choice with this car. Absolutely, and diesel the HP transmission yeah. is absolutely epic. So all in all, like honestly, I'm never so impressed with any car. <laughs> this is a definite winner. And this has something with the Jeep numbers does not have. long term service and reliability absolutely <laughs> and the hyundai service promise which i think they are absolutely fantastic when it yeah, comes yeah. to service and after sales so overall it is worth the price expensive but worth the price for sure just when you spend time with this you get to know how good of a car this is thank you so much for watching this video make sure you like share and comment and tell us what do you think about this car and given a choice which one would you buy